look, this is a no-brainer. We do exactly what he told us to do. We go into town, we find the dog counter, and we take it. I just don't understand why Jesus asked us to commit a crime. We're supposed to steal a donkey. Not steal, borrow it. Just <laughs> casually stroll up, untie the donkey, and... Say exactly what he told us to say. That the Lord has need of it, and send it back shortly. What does that even mean, the Lord has need of it? I think that's pretty self-explanatory. Why are you being so... So me? We all know I am the rule follower of the bunch. Why didn't he send Peter? Honestly, I'm asking myself the same question. This is right up. This is right at Peter's alley. Steal a donkey. Cause an uprising. That's his thing. Peter's the reason they chain up beds at the bank. <laughs> I don't want to go to jail. Would you you know how I feel voice? about one black toilet paper. Do you remember your voice, dude? Seriously. Just do what you said, okay? What could go wrong here? What, just need... what, what could go wrong here? A cracked lip? A busted rib? The kind of name calling that sends people into therapy down the road? Okay, you know what? Stop freaking. I'm serious. Stop this. Stop whining. Stop complaining. Stop. Not to judge you, but Okay, hey, you know what, man? You have serious trust issues. You know that? Do you know how many germs there are in a jail cell? No, I don't. I don't know how many germs there are in a jail cell. I don't know why there are people here lining the streets and gathering branches. All I know is that something important is about to happen. Wait a minute. Yeah. What do you mean I have trust issues? Oh my gosh. <laughs> okay, you know what? Fine, fine, sure, sure. We'll focus on you, okay? Okay. All right, here it is. Jesus has healed a blind man. He has cured leprosy. This man has raised people from the dead. The dead. I cannot even raise you from a nap. <laughs> Don't you think you can trust him to work out this donkey situation? Okay. Uh, I'm starting to see how much Jesus trusts the Father. He trusts him more than I trust the ground I'm standing on. To have that kind of trust, it, it's hard to imagine. But if you're going to trust anyone, it's going to be him, right? Let's do this. I'm ready. We got this. You go first. You know what? Baby steps in. Say, when we get there, we grab said donkey. Think maybe I can leave a Benjamin? No. A 20 spot? No. A thank you card? Absolutely not. All right. I'll trust him. Trust if we 
and it just it would be an exercise and then we kind of clean one another. So Harrison, <coughs> step up here on this chair and close your eyes. Alright, and then everybody fill in and we're going to ask you to fall and then they will catch you. So you have to trust us. We count to three, just relax and fall. Okay? One, two, three. <laughs> significance of that first Palm Sunday as that donkey carried Jesus into Jerusalem to begin what was now or is now referred to as Holy Week or Passion Week. Somehow, almost unbelievably, this celebration that began on Sunday on such a high note would end with horror by the end of the week because of what we might now refer to as even a greater Maybe the ultimate act of trust that takes place. You see, Jesus would put his life into his father's hands as he carried the fate of all mankind on his back while hanging on the cross. 
the last words that Jesus spoke from the cross, and we've been looking at the words of Jesus from the cross for the last six weeks, are significant to all mankind and to all of throughout history, as he, well, Luke describes it this way. Chapter 23, verse 36, 46, it reads, Then Jesus, calling out with a loud voice, said, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. And having said this, he breathed his last. When Jesus said those last words and then breathed his final breath, it was as if a fuse got lit, right? Uh, to, to a stick of dynamite that would blow the whole kingdom of darkness into smithereens. When Jesus did what he did and said what he said on the cross, he then entrusted all that he was about, all that he came from heaven to earth to do, into the hands of his heavenly Father. Jesus trusting his life, his death, in the hands of the Father. Well, that would make a way for you, for me, and for everyone throughout history to go into those same hands for all of eternity. If we choose to have the same trust that he had. Now the Gospel of Matthew gives us greater details of what transpires after this. In the Gospel of Matthew, we, we read uh, that, that, that much took place following that last breath. This wasn't the end. This was a new beginning when he breathed his last. Let's, let's just read from Matthew. And it kind of gives us a synopsis of things that, that would take place that same day. Matthew 27, verse 50, it says, And Jesus cried out again with a loud voice, and he yielded up his spirit. And behold, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom, and the earth shook, and the rocks were split. The tombs also were opened. And many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised, and coming out of the tombs after his resurrection, they went into the holy city and appeared to many. When the centurion and those who were with them, keeping watch over Jesus, saw the earthquake and what took place, they were filled with awe. And they said, truly, this was the Son of God. There were also many women looking on from a distance who had followed Jesus from Galilee, ministering to him among, among whom were Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James and Joseph and the mother of the sons of Zebedee. When it was evening, there came a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph, who also was a disciple of Jesus. He went to Pilate, and he asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate ordered it to be given to him. And Joseph took the body and wrapped it in a clean linen shroud, and laid it in his own new tomb, which he had cut into the rock. And he rolled a great stone to the entrance of the tomb, and he went away. Mary Magdalene and the other Mary were there, sitting opposite the tomb. Now, after this happened, Towards the dawn of the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And behold, there was a great earthquake. I feel like I'm giving something away for next week here. But that's okay. Behold, there was a great earthquake. For an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, his clothes as white as snow. And for fear of him, the guards trembled, and they became like dead men. But the angel said to the woman, Do not be afraid, for I know that you seek Jesus who was cross crucified. He is not here, for he has risen, just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Then they go quickly, then go quickly and tell his disciples that he has risen from the dead. And behold, he is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him. See how I am. I've told you. So they departed from the tomb with fear and great joy and ran to tell his disciples. Man, just the beginning when he breathes his last. It's not the end. It's the beginning of, of so much that takes place, not only in their lives, but in our lives as we consider it. A lot of stuff happened because Jesus trusted and put his life into the hands of his heavenly father. See, it all has to do with whose hands you are putting your lives into. Those final words from Jesus from the cross were expressing his complete trust in his Father. As he said, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. Now, commit, pledge, and trust, give, place, turn over, promise, 
trust, trust, trust. That's what Jesus did. That's a powerful moment of trust. And everything that takes place that I just read happens because he trusted his Father in heaven. Here's the thing. You know, I got, I got to think about this this week. And some of you, some of you know, um, Denise and I have, have this uh, little retreat cabin, lake house, whatever you want to call it. Um, and, and we, back in December, or rather January, I guess it was, entered into a, a bathroom renovation project. Okay? I'm here to tell you it's not done. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, as a matter of fact, due to a series of unfortunate events, our contractor has now moved on to another project because we couldn't get our plumber or electrician to come in. We couldn't coordinate it all. And, and so we have a young man, a young Amish man, who tomorrow is coming in to begin the plumbing work and the electrical work just some three or four months after the project began. Now, um, because my contract was forced to move on to another job right now, I, I talking to this young man last week, and I, I asked him, I said, could, could, could you do some framing for me? Could, could, could you do that? Uh, and some additional work of trying to, to, to get out of as much work myself as I possibly can while I'm talking to him. And, uh, you know, all of this would be above and beyond what he quoted me, the, the price for what he was going to do. And he said, okay. He said, I'll just keep track of the materials, the time, and I'll go through the work. And this is, a, you know, he's a, he's a wonderful young man, Amish man, um, and I've spent some time with him driving him back and forth, because as many of you know, Amish people don't, don't oftentimes drive. Um, and so, so I, I believe at this point I can trust him. So, uh, and by the way, his name is Emmanuel. Um, maybe that's a sign. Um, I don't know. But uh, regardless, I responded to him by saying, Emmanuel, I trust you. Emmanuel, I trust you. And that trust goes beyond a bathroom renovation project because my future marital happiness hangs in the balance. <laughs> I guess what I'm saying again is it's all about trust. Who are you willing to trust your future to? And I'm no longer talking about a bathroom renovation here. You see, it has to do with whose hands you're putting your life into and fully trusting. When Jesus was completing his part, his part of the, of the rescue mission of saving the world from sin, from death, from Satan, it was time to trust his Father to do the rest. Jesus did all he could do. Um, coming from heaven to earth, being born uh, by a virgin some 30 plus years earlier, living completely sinless, Although he was tempted in every way, as the author of Hebrews tells us, he never once compromised his life. He never cheated on his taxes. He never slipped a peek at an inappropriate site online. He never fudged on the truth. Never had one too many and got a DWI while in college. Never lied to his parents or did anything that would have qualified or disqualified him from being perfect, which is what he needed to be. Sinless. A sinless sacrifice would be worthy of making a complete paid in full payment for all of our messes, for all the times that we made bad choices. He then put his full trust of what he did into the hands of his heavenly father. And after Jesus had gone uh, all the way uh, through this process, after he had hung on that cross for six hours from nine in the morning till three in the afternoon, then he trusted his father. He trusted him. Having fulfilled every one of the prophecies, and we talked about this last week, over 300, uh, every uh, reference about the Messiah that had been recorded in the Old Testament, he had, he had now fulfilled them all. Jesus had completed his life by fully trusting his life into the hands of his Father. Transferred all trust with those last words from the cross. Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. In that moment, Jesus puts the proverbial saw and hammer into his father's hands. Why? Because he had full confidence in his father that he would bring the rental project to perfect completion. Just as it had been written up in the blueprints when they first formulated this plan. 
He, he would not only hang a doorway to eternity for everyone who would trust him, but he also trusted that his father would, would be the one who would not let him lay and decay in the tomb. His father's hands would, would be the hands that could raise him back to life after being dead for three days. Jesus would never have gone to the cross had he not fully trusted his father in heaven. See, it has to do with who you trust. It has everything to do with who you trust, who you're putting your faith in. Jesus had complete confidence in his Father in heaven as he said those words before breathing his last. Fully, fully trust him. Now, I, I know what you're thinking. He's God, right? He, he, he's God, so of course he trusts God the Father, right? I mean, God the Son would, would, would never not trust God the Father. And that's true. That's true. So how does trust enter into the picture? Well, don't forget that he is fully God. But at the same time, he is fully human. Right? Much as his humanity required him to trust God, what, what just the night before when he prayed in the garden, saying, thy will be done, not my will. That involved trust as he was in his, in his full humanity while being fully God. And so once again from the cross, he trusts his heavenly Father as he proclaims those words. And he doesn't just proclaim them uh, mildly. They're not just a whisper. It says in Luke 23, 46, then Jesus calling out with a loud voice was well, not some wimpy, uncertain, I hope this is the right choice kind of voice. It was loud and he was clear. There was no guesswork as to what Jesus was doing. He was doing just what he said he would do when he came to his life. This was recorded back in John chapter 10 when Jesus said, I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for his sheep. For this reason the Father loves me, because I lay down my life that I may take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down. <coughs> I have authority to lay it down, and I have authority to take it back up. This charge I have received from my Father. And Jesus is saying, I'm the only way. That's what he's saying in that passage. The only way to eternity with God the Father is through me. He's saying all roads do not lead to heaven as some would like you to think today. I'm the only way to heaven. He's saying, I'm the doorway. And this reno project into eternal life with God the Father, I am the doorway. On top of that, my Heavenly Father loves me because I lay down my life. Nobody takes my life from me. No Roman soldiers, no religious mobs. Nobody takes my life from me. I lay it down willingly into the hands of my Father, whom I fully trust. On the cross, Jesus puts humanity's salvation and their rescue mission from sin and death and Satan into the hands of the Father. He says, Father, into your hands I now commit my spirit. And in saying those words, Jesus is quoting a prayer. A prayer that is said by many of Jewish faith, even today, but certainly then. It was said at the end of every day. He is quoting scripture once again. See, it was part of a bedtime prayer that became famous and was regularly prayed by all Jews at that time at the end of the day. It originated by King David who wrote it as he was on the run from King Saul back in, and he wrote it, we, we, we read of it in Psalm 31, verse number five. When David writes into your hand, I commit my spirit, you have redeemed me, O Lord, faithful God. He goes on to say in verse 15, my times are in your hand. Rescue me from the hand of my enemies and from my persecutors. Make your face shine on your servants. Save me in your steadfast love. Into your hands I commit my spirit. 
the words of David that are proclaimed by Jesus on the cross. Words that those of Jewish faith would pray every night before they go to bed. And I think it's significant that they were praying that before they go to bed, not when they got up in the morning. Not saying, when I wake up in the morning, Father, into your hands I, I commit my spirit. Into your hands I commit my spirit. It was a prayer the Jews prayed before they went to bed at night to ensure that they were in good hands while they were asleep at night. In that unconscious state of, of sleep until that alarm clock would go off the next day and a new day began. The prayer is simply saying, I trust you, God. That's what the prayer is saying as David prayed it, as Jews prayed it, now as Jesus proclaims it. A prayer sort of in the spirit, mind you, of a prayer that many of us maybe have taught our children to pray. And you know what I'm saying here, right? Now I lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. If I should die before I wake, I pray the Lord my soul to take. It's sort of in that same vein. In the end, has to do with whose hands you're putting your life into. Who do you fully trust? Jesus laid down his life. He put it right in the middle of his father's hands. And his father brought him back to life on that Thursday, that first Easter Sunday morning. And so I would say to you, where have you laid your life? Whose hands have you committed your life to? If you're a follower of Jesus and you put your, your life into his hands with full trust, I, I'm going to tell you, he wants you to advance the story, okay? He wants you to share that story with others. And trust me, that takes trust as well. He wants you to invite them next Sunday to Easter service. So that they can hear about this message of God's grace, God's love. God's greatest gift to the world is Son Jesus Christ. He wants you to do that. Is there a risk involved? There's always risk when you step up and trust God. But you can trust Him to see you through it. You can trust Him. If He's calling you to do it, He will see you through it. And you will come out on the other side. If you trust Him. You need to ask God, now what do you want me to do with that trust? How can I further your kingdom? How can I share your love? How can I serve you? I'm putting my hands totally, my life totally in your hands. <coughs> if you've done that, you need to be asking yourself the question, what's next? What do you want from me now, God? You need to pick up the hammer and the saw and be part of the reno project. You just need to. That's his plan. Take some time this week, maybe, to tell somebody about your Savior. To tell somebody about how he has changed your life forever since you met him. You have to put your life in his hands fully and trust him. For those who have never put their lives in his hands, it's a bigger question, right? Maybe today is the day that he's calling you to make that decision. To put your life in the hands of Jesus. To fully trust him. He's waiting. His hands are so strong. They really are. His hands will see you through anything that this life throws your way. They are hands that want to hold you up in the most difficult times of your life. You see, this past week, I put my trust in the hands of Emmanuel, the Amish carpenter. What better day than today to put your trust in the hands of Emmanuel, the Jewish carpenter? He is the doorway. And trust me, once you do it, he will begin a brand new project in your life grander than any you can ever imagine. That's his promise to you. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we thank you. We praise you for your faithfulness. We, we seek your grace, your forgiveness for those times that they haven't fully trusted you. 
Our faith has wavered for whatever reason. We're sorry, Lord. We're just so grateful that the faithfulness you have, the faithfulness your son has, never, never gives way. You are always faithful, always trusting. Pray, Lord God, that starting this hour on this day, that that, uh, that full commitment would be seen by all. That we would be your hands, that we would be your feet, that we would share your son Jesus this week in ways that maybe we've been afraid to before because maybe we just didn't quite fully trust you in those situations to speak boldly about who and what we believe in. I pray, Lord God, that you would embolden each and every one of us, that you would give us opportunities this week to share with others your Son. And that in the midst of that, you would give us words to speak. Lord, just uh, make us available and use us as you see fit. We pray these things and all things in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ.